everybody, Prince here. This is going to be a quick review of WWE, the best of Walter in progress. Uh, I'm going to try to just get through this as quick as possible, under 10 minutes, because uh, every time I've been trying to record this video, I keep getting interrupted by something or by someone, and it's really pissing me off, so might as well just make this as quick as possible. So for those who don't know, the last three months or so, WWE's been uploading a lot of independent wrestling content on the network every Saturday. Uh, they've uploaded... Um, either full shows from Progress and um, from Progress Evolve, ICW and WXW, and they've also made these special compilations of the best of Progress. Uh, recently they did one that featured the best of NXT in, in Progress, so talents that are currently or were in NXT that also competed in, in uh, Progress uh, in the past few years, like for example uh, Samoa Joe actually had a match with uh, Rampage Brown at, an, at one of the earliest uh, progress shows in 2014. So that's an example of that. Um, tons of really great matches on those compilations, and I really want to review these ones um, sometime in the future. Like whether I have the network or not, like in this case, I was only able to watch this on a different video site. I'm not going to mention by name, but I just wanted to talk about these now because these matches on this Walter compilation, it's just fantastic. The best way I can describe it is like, if this is like a mini compilation, um, like I guess like one of those single disc special compilations that uh, Ring of Honor used to do years ago, like Best in the World, Bloodstained Blood Honor, etc. Or, you know, considering it's a superstar profile of sorts, that this is basically like the best of X wrestler that Ring of Honor used to do as a bonus disc for several DVDs, like the best of Nigel McGuinness on the... Survival of the Fittest 2010 DVD, or uh, The Best of the American Wolves on the Champions vs. All-Stars 2011 DVD, etc. So yeah, you basically get the best of Walter from Progress in this compilation, and trust me, each of these matches are great. Even the weakest match is still great for the story that it told, but every matchup was just great here. And Walter, for sure, is one of my favorite wrestlers going right now. I would say Fave 5 right now, for sure, up there with Brian and... With Daniel Bryan and uh, Shingo Takagi for sure. Uh, I can't really think of another two for a Fae 5, but yeah. It's kind of hard for me to describe, like, like using the phrase, Walter is like if X-Wrestler and X-Wrestler had a baby. You know, if I had to think of two, the two that came to mind were Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar, but if I wanted to throw in a third one in there, no, not for the wrong reasons you think, but uh, I was thinking of Stan Hansen for some reason, uh, probably because Stan is not really the kind of guy that wrestles a, you know, precise, pre-choreographed uh, style of matchup, if you've seen any of his matches, like the one with Vader at the Dome, um, and it's pretty apparent in the match that Walter had with Thatcher in a little bit, but I want to breeze through this compilation as best as possible, and as quick as possible, so let's go through this real quick. So first up from Chapter 55, uh, we get the Atlas Division Championship 3-way match, Matt Riddle defending against Walter and Timothy Thatcher. This was easily, in my opinion, the match of the night from that show. Just 11 minutes of just action between three big lads, which is funny because uh, Riddle I don't really see as like a big lad, but as a big lad, but he definitely just clicked in there with Walter and Thatcher. Obviously, Walter and Thatcher being members of RingConf. Um, just the chemistry between these three guys was great. Uh, the only two match, the only matches I would have liked to see also on this compilation would have been one of the Matt Riddle Walter matches for the Atlas title before this. I think they had a trilogy earlier in the year at Progress New York, and then another couple at Chapter Forty Six and Chapter Fifty One, which I heard were amazing. But yeah, this was just awesome. Very action packed. Very reminiscent of like. Angle and Mysterio's triple threat matches with Randy Orton at WrestleMania 22 and the Benoit one from SmackDown in 2002. Just very short but action-packed, great spots, great creativity. Just, But the difference between those ones is that there's a little bit of stiffness in here with the chops and the kicks and the strikes from Walter. Let me tell you, Walter has one of the best kicks in wrestling. And I'm not just talking, I'm not even talking super kicks, I'm just talking about straight up kicks. Anytime he delivers it, it's just brutal. And this features uh, a very similar spot to the WrestleMania 22 match, where Walt, where Thatcher's trying to give uh, Riddle a German suplex, but then Walter comes in from behind and gives a double German. But, you know, visually, the WrestleMania one was a little better because of Ray being the, literally the smallest man in the bunch. But here, it was just as vicious and brutal because Riddle, when he rotated, it looked like he landed on his head. But, oh man, this was just awesome, very short, but just action-packed, 
definitely a great uh, way to start off uh, this compilation with uh, Walter winning the Atlas title. Just great stuff. Definitely, um, you know, a bit of a hidden gem from the last few years, but this is a must-see for sure. Uh, then we get the, the next three matches are all just classics, in my opinion. Three of the best matches of Walter's career, three of the top ten, maybe even top five for sure, especially with the next one. From Chapter 62, uh, we get the Atlas Championship match, Walter versus Timothy Thatcher. This was incredible, and I remember rating this four and a half when I first saw it, but rewatching it again, you know, paying attention to what they were doing in this matchup. It's not like a, you know, a precise match where every little thing counted. It, it was a match where when you pay attention to it and you just, you know, block away, you know, going on your phone and you watch the guys just grapple and beat the crap out of each other. It's just so engaging to watch and pay attention to because this is where I think the Stan Hansen comparison comes in because with the way that Walter th wrestled Thatcher, it's not like that they wrestled like an overly choreographed technical matchup where it's like spot, 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 spot or something like that. It's just very much a lot of grappling, a lot of technical wrestling, submission work, um, brutal strikes, very vicious, stiff and intense. The best comparison I could find to this would be um, Fit Finley versus Steven Regal from Uncensored 96, where you did get some crazy, uh, a couple of nutty spots in that match, like the elbow off the apron. But um, aside from maybe one or two spots, this is one where it was just more about the visceral intensity of the, vi of the violence that both were dishing out to one another, from the uppercuts to the kicks to the chops. And this features the most br one of the most brutal chops I've ever seen. People remember the one that that Walter gave to Adam Cole that sounded like a firecracker went off. This one was just as vicious, and it's very reminiscent of the one I saw that Roderick Strong delivered to Eric Stevens in 2008 in FIP, but the sound of it was just so vicious and so, like, unforgiving the way he delivered it. So he basically chopped Thatcher right in the face. Like, he was trying to chop him in the chest, but Thatcher picked up his arms to, to protect himself. But instead, Walter's like, you know what? I'm going to chop you right in the face. And it was so vicious. And the facial expression he gave was so great as well, just to really sell the pain of it. Very reminiscent of William Regal's facial expressions. Just very small, you know, very expressive, but like very restrained at the same time, just the way he delivered it. And the commentator was great when he said, oh my god, he just chopped him in the fucking face! Just brilliant, you know, very, you know, real sort of, uh, sort of a line from a commentator just to really sell the viciousness of that shop and just both beat the shit out of each other so brutal so intense but oh this was just so great i would say this is easily thatcher's best match ever and you know when anybody says that this is the best match in progress history you know now after rewatching it recently i would have to agree this is the best match in progress history i really can think of just a, a couple of matches maybe a few a few that could potentially rival this, but this was just incredible. Very stiff, very rugged, intense matchup. Uh, one of the best matches of 2018 for sure. I, I definitely think in retrospect this should have been in the top 10. Uh, no doubt about it, but this was incredible. Then we go to another classic matchup for the, this time for the Progress World Championship. Walter defending against uh, Tyler Bate from Chapter 76, Hello Wembley, which at that time, and I think to this day, is still the biggest show they ever did. Because this was the first in, um, wrestling event to be held at Wembley Arena. Not Wembley Stadium, but Wembley Arena in about 30 years. I think since 1988. So for them to get to run a show in that building was so huge at the time. And it ended up being a huge success. The show was excellent. If you haven't seen my review or you haven't seen Lundrick's or Art Carter's review, go check them out. Um, I think we all did a pretty good job in putting over how great the show was. It was really awesome. Uh, you had... Ilya Dragunov versus Pete Dunne in a European Wrestling Dream match. You had Doug Williams' UK retirement match against Trent Seven. You had Matt Riddle and Mark Haskins in the opener. The Thunder Bastard match with the tag titles. A TLC match. Um, a no DQ match between Jimmy Havoc and uh, Paul Robinson. Brutal match. You had such great wrestling on the undercard. But the main event really topped everything in my opinion. Now, now, Walter had won the title a couple, uh, a couple of months prior against, uh, I believe, Travis Banks. Yeah, Travis Banks. Uh, after losing um, a, another title match via countout, so he uh, vacated the 
the Atlas Championship and defended and uh, ended up beating Travis Banks for the cha- for the world title and ended up being a champion for a little over a year, I think it was. Um, and for this show, it was originally supposed to be Walter versus Zack Sabre Jr. Um, since Zack had won the, uh, the Super Strong Style 16 tournament earlier in the year, and he said Wembley, he wanted the title shot for this show, but unfortunately because he was uh, forced into a prior commitment to New Japan, um, since he is under contract with them, he couldn't make it to the show, so he had to reschedule that, which we would see uh, at the following show, Chapter 77, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So, at Chapter 75, I believe Tyler Bate defeated um, Mark Haskins to get the number one contendership for this show. And let me tell you, everyone loves their match with Cardiff uh, the following year, which was an incredible match. And it's one of my favorite matches of the decade for sure. Just an uh, unbelievable epic, you know, very reminiscent of the, of the All Japan's King's Road matches. I do agree with that comparison. Just very long, but still never boring, and it felt like that there was such an escalation of tension and drama between the two, and the chemistry between Walter and Tyler Bates just, was just magical in that match, and here, they definitely really showed the, the chemistry they had w- with one another, and it's very, you know, this was actually their first proper singles match, they've only had two proper singles matches, this, uh, this one from Chapter 76 and the Cardiff match. The only major interaction I can remember them having prior to this was uh, a six-man uh, tag team main event when it was Ring Comp versus British Strong Style at Chapter 47 uh, the year prior. And the moment everyone remembers from that match was when Tyler Bate did a deadlift German to Walter for a near fall. And that was an, and I've seen that match, and it really is excellent. But that moment was just incredible. And Bate just got better and better as the years went on. And it's really, really apparent, you know, especially with the Cardiff match. But when he went into this one, I love that he wore the gold tights. I thought it was really cool. You know, visual contrast to the black tights of Walter. Um, the visual of just a small guy like Tyler Bate to go up against a giant like Walter is just so striking. And it's so striking, in fact, that Progress actually has that image of them staring down before the match began. Or right as the match began. As the YouTube header for their, as the header for their YouTube channel. That's just how great the visual was and just how great the electricity for that match was, and they just really clicked in this matchup, just, it was really long, nearly 30 minutes, but they just really did an amazing job of escalating the tension between the two, you know, having a a wrestling match to start, but then Tyler trying to pick up Walter for for some big moves, And, and let me tell you something, for the hundreds of times that we've seen Hogan pick up a big man, like whether it be Andre, you know, the, the one with Andre was definitely special, but anytime he, you know, body slammed anybody, shut the fuck up. I'm sorry, that's my brother just yelling from another room. Anyway, for all the times that we've seen like Cena and Hogan pick up big men, I just don't think that the the emotional struggle was as real as this one right here, because because it's very apparent, you know, Tyler's much smaller than Walter, so, and he just does a brilliant job of selling the fact that it is a struggle, so whenever he tries to pick him up, it's not like he gets him right away, or even like, oh, it's just a little bit, but then he's gonna get him right afterwards, no, it's a consistent, it's a consistent, um, challenge for Tyler throughout the match, and whenever it pays off, it's just brilliant, you know, whether he suplexes him on the outside, or body slams him in the ring, or even when he did an exploder off the top rope, it was just incredible to see him do something like that. The the the, the feats of strength were amazing. The storytelling was amazing. Just just the chemistry between these two is just so magical. And I really hope we get one more match between the two with Tyler getting that one elusive victory over over Walter. You know, the performance that Walter gave in these matches it's very reminiscent to Samoa Joe. You know, like any time he faced against a smaller guy, like let's say Austin Aries, because any time that he faced Aries, especially a Final Battle 2004, he always would go in with like kind of underestimating him. But then as the match goes along, and Aries just really picks up the intensity and the stiffness with the different strikes and the different maneuvers and combinations he would put together, like the the more you believe that he could potentially win, and that's what we got with with these matches with Tyler Bay, and they were just incredible. Love these matches, just. These have to be seen to be believed. Uh, really, just incredible, incredible stuff. 
And then we get another classic match the following show. And the, the full show is actually up on the network right now, actually. If you want to check it out, I heard it's really good. Uh, but from Chapter 77, Pumpkin Spice Progress, the, the match that was originally supposed to take place at Chapter 76 in Wembley, um, Walter defending the Progress World title against uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Now, obviously, this was not the only time that these two guys have wrestled. They had plenty of matches over the years. They had a few in WXW. I think the most notable one they had was on the We Love Pro Wrestling Tour. I believe it was 2018. Uh, they had a match in the main event of Evolve 99. They had one uh, earlier in the year, even, uh, WrestleMania weekend for... I can't remember which chapter it was. Oh, man. One of the progress shows for WrestleMania weekend, they had a number one contenders match. And for me, if you want to watch one matchup prior to this um, that needs to be seen, it has to be their match from PWG All-Star Weekend 13, Night 2. That was just an incredible match. Just such a stark contrast to a lot of Zack's matches uh, before and afterwards. I mean, even a contrast to this one, the, the, the PWG match was more about both men just delivering stiff, brutal strikes, especially Walter trying to chop down Zack. And, and it was so satisfying as well, considering Zack was just coming off of that heel run as PWG champion when he feuded with Chuck Taylor and Trent and, and so on. So yeah, just really satisfying matchup. But we get this one in the main event of Chapter 77. And one of the things I liked was that in that match, right at the beginning, uh, one of the commentators mentions that... Um, that Zack wasn't able to have his big moment at Wembley, you know, to compete in the main event of Wembley, which would have been a huge draw either way. But for them to put on this show, you know, it's kind of disappointing, but it's still great to see someone like Zack get a title shot against Walter on a big stage like this. And as he said, um, this is this is Zack's Wembley. Like, it, like going in, if, if Zack was going to win the championship, this was going to be seen as his Wembley moment. And... Yeah, I really like that they did that one. It's kind of like if um, Daniel Bryan wasn't able to have a match at WrestleMania, which that would be ludicrous nowadays. Like, if he wasn't able to get a title match at WrestleMania, but he got it the following night on Raw or at the following pay-per-view, which was a big pay-per-view in Chicago or something like that, that would be kind of seen as, like, his WrestleMania to an extent. So, yeah, um, I like the way that I like the fact that they sold that, you know, knowing that Zack wasn't able to compete because he had to go to New Japan for that night. Uh, but these two just had an incredible match uh, right here. Easily the best Zack and Walter match. You may have seen me recommend this one on the uh, top 20 Zack Sabre Jr. matches list I did last year. I'm really proud of that list and still am to this day. But I think I would have uh, put this one at number three, um, revisiting this matchup again. Maybe number two. But this was just incredible. Um, these two just have great chemistry. It's one where, where, where Zack has to use more of his technical wrestling to try to chop down the, the the Redwood Tree and Walter, and these two just really clicked in this match. Just great intensity, uh, great brutal stiff chops. I mean, I can't really remember everything from this match, but... Uh, yeah, just incredible, incredible chemistry between these two. Uh, and, it, and it works, and it makes sense because these two have met so many different times uh, before this in WXW, Progress... The, year, uh, the American independence scene, and so on. So they were just able to craft such a, a beautiful wrestling match. But brutal, but still a beautiful wrestling match that has to be seen. Awesome, awesome stuff. Love this match. And then the we get the weakest match on the set, or as Sanders would probably say, the least spectacular match on the set. Uh, from Chapter 78, um, when was this? November, I think? Yeah, Chapter 78 for the world title, Walter versus Mark Haskins. Um, they showed a video package from Progress that showed that um, Haskins won the title two years prior at chapter, I think it was chapter 36 in the main event in a triple threat against Skrull and Tommy End. But he had to vacate the championship because of a supposed, I don't know if this was legit or not, I'm pretty sure it had to have been because there's no way you can run a neck injury angle and come back from that. Um, but uh, they said that Haskins had to uh, vacate the championship because of a neck injury, so he was trying to chase back at the championship and wasn't able to do it. So he got this title shot against Walter. I don't remember how, but he got the title shot anyway for this show. I think he won the tri a triple threat number one contenders match at Chapter 77. So he got this main event match with Walter. And the match was great. I think these two really clicked um, because, you know, even though... Haskins is a bit of a is more of a striker and very flu fluid in the ring. He just didn't have the size or you know just couldn't really compare up to Walter 
if anything. And Walter, this was when Walter was really starting to hit it, starting to hit his stride as a heel in progress. I mean, you know, Walter is well respected, but you know, when you put him in with a with an over baby face like a Tyler Bate or or even an over wrestler like Zack Saber Jr., he can be such a great heel. And he once again was just great in this matchup, just beating the hell out of Haskins. I think he even I can't remember but he did some sort of move on the apron, dropping Haskins on his head. Just so just that was vicious. Just a great main event. Nothing really special here, but it was a great main event between the two with a good story behind it. And yeah, just great matchup. Definitely worth checking out. And then we close this out on Chapter 92. Um, the following year uh, for the Progress World title, Walter versus Ilya Dragunov. Everybody knows how great their match, how phenomenal their match from... NXT UK was. It's definitely one of my favorite matches of the year. Uh, I really want to talk about that match in a different video, but these two had several matches before this, uh, before that match as well. They had this one. They were in the final of the WXW 16 karat gold tournament in 2017, which I would say that one was actually maybe even better than this one, than, than this one. Then they had a triple threat at, at the at the following year's uh, 16 karat gold tournament with John Klinger, that was an incredible match with an amazing pop from when Iliad returned from injury. Uh, then they had a two title matches, uh, from first from the True Colors pay-per-view. I remember reviewing that show, uh, if you want to check it out. And then they had one more match at Superstars of Wrestling, I think a month or two later, which I heard was excellent. But this one was just another amazing match between these two. These two just have a great chemistry, just great combination. To, you know, even though Ilya is smaller and sometimes his facials can be a little goofy, um, he just sells Walter's offense so beautifully. Just intense, stiff, rugged. Uh, but he, you know, like, oh, like, they, like he, he sells the, the damage from Walter like it's death, but he just does an incredible job doing so. So I forgot to mention that the night before, I think it was the night before, at Chapter 91, um, Dragunov actually earned the opportunity by beating Jordan Devlin in a number one contenders match. I, I'm not sure if that's up on the network now. I'm pretty confident it has to be on the Dragunov compilation. Maybe they'll put one, maybe they'll put it with a Jordan Devlin compilation. I don't know. But that was a phenomenal match. I would say that was even better than this one. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. But this one was really awesome as well. Um, just fiery intensity between the two, great chemistry. I would still say their NXT UK match is easily their best match together, um, which is kind of crazy to think because they were working in front of no crowd in comparison to what they had here with this show, which was a hot electric um, British crowd. Uh, but, but these two just, once again, just show great chemistry with one another. I love their chemistry. It's such a fresh combination anytime that they go in there. And to see, like, if you watch the, the 2017 match, which is actually on YouTube right now if you want to check it out, uh, in comparison to the 2017 match, I was shocked how much of a gut that Dragunov actually had. And then in the course of, like, three or four years, not only has he trimmed down, but he's just really cut up and really kind of has, like, a similar physique to Cesaro almost. Like, not exactly, but just has such... Looks like that he just has little to no muscle fat on him, and it's incredible. Or little to no body fat on him, and it's incredible. Just, just how shredded and cut up Dragunov is now compared to 2017. But the strikes were just no less stiff and intense. These two really worked well with one another. This show is actually, I think, available on the network as well. And I was supposed, I was going to review both shows, 91 and 92, before Walter and Dragunov had their match last year. But I didn't get the chance to do it. But if you want my thoughts... On what to check out. I haven't seen the shows yet, but I'll review them sometime soon, maybe. But um, if you want my thoughts, check out Dragonoff's matches with Jordan Devlin the night before, and then this one with Walter. Just excellent, excellent match. And overall, this compilation has to be seen to be believed. Just so many great matches on here. Uh, the Thatcher match is easily my favorite, followed by the matches with Zack Sabre Jr. and Tyler Bate. The Dragonoff match is excellent. The Triple Threat was awesome. And then the match with Mark Haskins, while the weakest on the compilation was great as well. I mean, all these matches were great. If you're a fan of Walter like I am, this is a, this is a must-see. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below, and until the next review, guys, peace.